Hello, hi everybody, Dr. Uche here, your Dr. Booktuber, back today to review a book with you. So, if this is your first time on my channel, welcome, welcome. We always love to have new people joining. And if you're dropping by again, I'm so glad you could make it back. Before we even go ahead, go ahead and hit subscribe and also hit the alert bell so you'll know when I upload new videos. I come here to review what I'm reading to inspire you on your reading journey. And I'm always eager to learn what you are reading. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all my friends and fans all over the world who are always so quick to tell me a new book they've read that they want to see me review and things like that. I feel so inspired and uplifted. Reading is my joy, has always been, and it's so glad to book, network with you in this way. So today, I have my cup of tea. Uh, you may know I love tea and coffee, so this is a mixture of peppermint and roasted dandelion. I love to mix teas and see how it, it turns up. Sometimes it's good, sometimes eh, you know, it's not quite, but let's see how this is. So with my teacup in hand here and my mug, this is going well. I'm going to dig in to review my book today. I am talking or discussing The Secret Lives of Baba Shegi's Wives. The Secret Lives of Baba Shegi's Wives by Lola Chaneyan, I believe is the pronunciation. It's a Yoruba name. So I loved this book. I understand this book was published under a different title, but part of me, I don't remember uh, the initial title. I think this is the subsequent title, The Secret Lives of Baba Shegi's Wives by Lola Chaneyan. I love this book so much. Um, so to start off, it zooms into a young woman, uh, Bolanle, who ends up in a, um, marrying a guy who has, uh, four, make sure I'm saying it right. Three wives already. I believe three wives already. And they're all addressed as is usual in the Yoruba culture. And actually in a great part of Nigeria, where my ancestors are from, um, where uh, my family's from, people are addressed with the name of their eldest child. So you become mama, you know, somebody and, um, um, uh, and so on and so forth. And in Yoruba, it's Iya, the person who is the, the child. So the three wives married to this man have to welcome this fourth woman, Bolanle, into the home. And we learn very quickly that she has fertility issues, or so we get to think initially. That is how it looked that she had the issue because of course it had to be her. This man already has a boatload of kids with three other women. So how could it be his problem, right? How could he be the one who has a challenge or a fertility problem? So the plot thickens. And when I say thickens, I mean there are twists and turns. You know, just when you think you're getting it, there's another plot that gets revealed. And this is one of the most beautiful things about this book is just the art. The way she went from story to story intertwined, developing characters, telling us about different people, telling us about Bolanle and her family, her relationship with her sister. Things that happened when she was younger, we get to learn later on that she was brutally raped by some man she met uh, quite randomly as a teen. Uh, obviously, she made an immature, unwise decision to follow some stranger in his car, end up in the guy's home. The guy brutally raped her. And then she got involved with somebody else, a boyfriend, and she found out she was married and she terminated the pregnancy. But she, when she now found out she could not conceive in her marital home, she started to wonder or, or she mentioned to a doctor that she had terminated a pregnancy earlier in a sort of backyard kind of clinic, not staffed by fully qualified medical people. And so she figured she probably did something at the time wrong to herself. And that's why she wasn't able to conceive. So we keep going and this is at the beginning. 
then she starts to develop the characters, the various characters, or she starts to tell us about the wives. Every single one of them had an agenda. <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing in this story. So they all end up marrying this man and every single one of them end up marrying him for some reason. They're not particularly fond of him or in love with this man, but they all end up with him somehow other things didn't work or they got desperate or somehow they're forced into it. Uh, like in the case of the first wife, her mother forced her into that arrangement. She was quite um, uh, productive as a young girl in the sense she made a lot of money through various business uh, ventures and had saved up a lot of money. And somehow her mother got a hold of all this money and gives it away to this man to, hey, come marry my daughter. So so she follows him because he took her money, right? <laughs> so he wanted to go where her money was. And um, so that's the first wife. The second wife, I think she ended up in a very desperate kind of situation where she um, lost her parents and ended up with a very abusive family that uh, supposedly were, suppo were going to send her to school in exchange for her serving them uh, in the home, but I think it didn't quite happen. And then the third wife, I'm forgetting now all their stories, but they all had some reason, some issue pushed them into the arms of this man. So the fourth wife, the Bolan Le lady, actually, it would seem is the only one who actually made a reasonable choice and, um, uh, made a decision to actually marry this guy and had some mm, sort of reasonable affection for the man who wanted to build a home with him, although she had her own demons as well. So, you know, the most tricky thing is how the children and the family, the children born to the older wives, you know, were carrying on with their lives and various things going on and their relationship with this new fourth wife um, kind of very tricky, including an elder son and the eldest daughter and how things started going really nasty. We get to learn that, oops, this man has the <laughs> fertility problem and the wives get to learn, or the first wife figured that out pretty quickly. And so she had to figure out how to have her children. So she went outside the house right? <laughs> to find a suitable father for her children because it wasn't working with this husband. And when the other two wives came in the home, she had a decent enough relationship with them to tell them the truth. To the effect that this is how we actually conceive in this family, in this home. This is what you have to do putting them in the arms of various men in the community because that was the only way they would conceive. And so one after the other, these women have children and this man walks around thinking they're his till the fourth wife comes around and they really don't like her at all. She's the only educated one of the four women. And so they don't tell her the secret about how they go about having children in that home. So she is barren, right? <laughs> she does not conceive and she doesn't know the problem. She assumes it's her because of course this man has so many children with other women. It has to be me, right? So it's a very artistic um, book, uh, well-crafted with twists and turns and so much. I am not gonna spoil, you know, this is a bit of a spoiler already but I do try to leave something for you to discover on your own. So you'll have to read the rest to discover, but I highly recommend this book. It's crafted around the life or a monogamous, a uh, polygamous family, a man with three wives initially who marries a fourth, and that sort of suddenly brings a lot of stuff to light. Like if he hadn't married that fourth wife, he wouldn't have learned of the various things, of the deceit of his uh, first uh, three wives and things he didn't know about would not have come to light. So um, I highly recommend this. And this is The Secret Lives of Baba Shaggy's Wives, 
by Lola Chanayon. Highly recommended. I'd love to know what you think. If you do read it, leave a comment. Again, remember to subscribe and hit the alert bell so you know when I upload new videos. This is Dr. Uche, your Dr. Booktuber. I come here to review books to inspire you on your reading journey. And also, I'm so eager always to learn about what you're reading. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the friends who always message me and uh, drop um, uh, titles and, and also to new things to inspire my next review. I am looking forward to coming over here to chat with you again uh, in another week or two. Uh, I, I wish I could say things are perfect, but at least every second week I try to upload a video. So till then, you stay well and take care. Bye.